Every time you learn something new, your brain forms new connections. This process, known as learning, involves forging new synaptic links. As you leave imprints on your neurological tissue through interactions with your environment, you gain opportunities to apply, personalize, and demonstrate this new information. Some individuals align their behaviors with their intentions, matching their actions to their thoughts by stepping into the unknown and trying new things. This leads to new experiences that enrich the brain by reorganizing circuits beyond your initial understanding. When neurons connect in this way, the brain produces chemicals called feelings or emotions. For example, feeling unlimited, patient, abundant, or free teaches your body to understand what your mind has grasped intellectually. Thus, knowledge is for the mind, while experience is for the body. In this moment, you begin to embody the truth of a philosophy or theory, signaling new genes and rewriting your biological program. If you can do this once, you can do it again. Repeating an experience conditions your mind and body to work as one. When you practice something so much that your body knows it as well as your mind, it becomes second nature, innate and familiar. Eventually, you no longer need to consciously think about it as it becomes a subconscious program. Our goal is to transition from philosopher to initiate to master, from knowledge to experience to wisdom, from mind to body to soul, from thinking to doing to being. This involves learning with your head, practicing with your hands, and knowing by heart. The next step in breaking the habit of being ourselves is understanding the importance of synchronizing the mind and body while breaking the chemical continuity of negative states like guilt, shame, anger, or depression. Resisting the body's demand to revert to old unhealthy patterns isn't easy, but help is just a thought away. This process is essential to transforming an emotion that has become part of your personality. To recondition the body to align with a new mind, it's easy to feel hopeless when we realize that the chemistry of our emotions has habituated our bodies to states dominated by anger, jealousy, resentment, sadness, and similar feelings. These programs and propensities are deeply embedded in our subconscious. However, the good news is that we can become consciously aware of these tendencies. To change your personality, you need to change your state of being, which is closely connected to the feelings you've memorized. Just as negative emotions can become entrenched in the operating system of your subconscious, so can positive ones. We've all declared, I want to be happy. But unless the body is reconditioned, it will continue to express programs of guilt, sadness, or anxiety. The conscious mind might seek joy, but the body, programmed by years of negative emotions, resists. We often proclaim change from a mental standpoint, but on a visceral level, we struggle to feel true happiness. This disconnection occurs because the mind and body are not working together. If you've been conditioned to feel negatively for years, those feelings create an automatic state of being. Essentially, you are subconsciously unhappy. Your body knows how to be negative more effectively than your conscious mind knows how to be positive. You don't have to think about being negative, it's just how you are. How can your conscious mind influence this attitude in the subconscious? Some suggest positive thinking is the solution. However, positive thinking alone doesn't work. Many so-called positive thinkers have felt negative for most of their lives and now try to think positively, creating a polarized state. They consciously think one way, but feel the opposite internally. When the mind and body are in opposition, change cannot occur. Emotions are the end products of past experiences. During an experience, the brain receives vital information through the five senses, sight, smell, sound, taste, and touch. As this sensory data is processed, networks of neurons arrange themselves into specific patterns that reflect the external event. When these nerve cells connect, the brain releases chemicals that create emotions. Those chemicals are what we commonly refer to as emotions or feelings, terms we use interchangeably for simplicity. When these emotions flood your body chemically, you detect a shift in your internal state. Naturally, you start thinking and feeling differently from moments before. When you notice this internal change, you'll likely pay attention to whatever or whoever in your external environment triggered it. Identifying the cause of your internal change in the outer world constitutes a memory event, both neurologically and chemically. 
You encode this environmental information into your brain and body, enhancing your ability to recall experiences based on how they felt at the time. Feelings and emotions serve as a chemical record of past experiences. For instance, imagine your boss arrives for your performance review looking visibly irritated, speaking loudly with garlic on their breath. Accusations follow, leaving you jittery, weak, queasy, and fearful, associating the sensory information with internal changes. This external experience leaves an emotional imprint, replaying in your mind repeatedly. Each recall triggers the same fearful and angry responses, conditioning your body to relive the past. To delve deeper into this, consider your body as the unconscious mind or an objective servant following your consciousness's directives. It perceives emotions from external experiences and those fabricated internally through thought as indistinguishable. Continuously cycling through feelings of betrayal over years conditions your body to dwell in the past. Continuously dwelling on that experience with your boss or reliving those familiar feelings day after day sends consistent chemical signals to your body, linking it to past occurrences. This chemical continuity tricks your body into believing it's still undergoing those past experiences, perpetuating the cycle of reliving the same emotional turmoil. When you consistently replay thoughts and feelings associated with betrayal, your body remains anchored in the past. Essentially, your body becomes a repository of past memories, living in a perpetual state of past experiences. As you persistently recreate these emotions, your thoughts become constrained by your feelings, trapping you in a loop of past events. According to quantum law, your repeated focus on past emotions perpetuates their existence, leading you to create more of the past in your present and future. Essentially, many of us live in the past, resisting the prospect of embracing new possibilities. Our bodies become so accustomed to the chemical imprints of past experiences that they develop a sort of addiction to these familiar feelings. While we may yearn for new adventures and envision bold futures, our bodies, driven by feelings, resist sudden shifts in direction. This resistance complicates the process of personal change, leaving many individuals unable to break free from the grip of their past memories and feelings. Even though we may desire fresh experiences, the compulsion to revisit past emotions often holds us back. While feelings and emotions are natural products of experience, constantly reliving the same ones hinders our ability to embrace new opportunities. Consider individuals who nostalgically reminisce about the good old days. Essentially, they're expressing a longing for something new to stimulate their emotions, as they feel stuck in a cycle of reliving past glory moments. If we acknowledge the influence of our thoughts on our destiny, it becomes evident that many of us are merely circling back to familiar territories instead of venturing into new realms. To break free from this cycle, one must actively engage in life and explore new possibilities, even if it means challenging the dominance of past emotions. How many times must we forget before we cease forgetting and start remembering? That's what we call change. Similarly, how many instances of unconsciousness must we endure until we no longer slip into unconsciousness, remaining in a state of awareness? This marks the moment of transformation. Imagine you've transitioned from the sidelines to the playing field, a significant step for many. You may express belief in the potential for self-healing and life transformation, having witnessed others' testimonials. However, truly engaging in this journey involves understanding that healing necessitates change. Those genuinely committed to this path comprehend that change is imperative. They don't wait for healing or prosperity to induce gratitude and joy. Instead, they recognize that cultivating gratitude initiates the healing process. They grasp the practical application of the knowledge they've acquired, understanding its transformative potential. For instance, despite experiencing better sleep, reduced pain, and increased energy post-meditation, some individuals notice stagnant blood values. Rather than dismissing these improvements, they introspect, questioning what barriers hinder complete healing. This introspection triggers frontal lobe activity, the seat of conscience. Reflecting on daily behavior becomes paramount. Did you uphold your ideals today? Did you falter? If so, when and why? This self-awareness demands considerable energy and vigilance to interrupt habitual patterns. 
Remember, slipping into unconsciousness doesn't signify failure. It's an opportunity for heightened consciousness. Continuously recognizing unconscious states places you outside the habitual program. Awareness allows you to objectively observe your subjective self, facilitating learning from mistakes. While errors abound in life, whether you repeat them defines your path. If you resolve not to repeat past responses that weaken you, you're evolving. Each challenge demands a higher level of mental engagement, pushing you towards evolution. So, confront challenges with a greater level of mindfulness, embracing the journey of self-transformation.